Hello everybody, welcome to the Global Watch. This is the International Prayer Room. It's Friday the 15th of July with Heronhood just over the horizon and it's five o'clock Jerusalem time. And this is the Shabbat, so Shabbat Shalom everybody. And Ulrika is gonna be leading us in spite of not feeling great. So everybody put your prayers into Ulrika for the, the next hour or so. So Ulrika, we bless you, we love you, thank you for stepping up even though you're not feeling great. And we just pray the Lord's inspiration on everything you do and stay on this watch. And uh, we're all looking forward to meeting you soon. God bless you. Shabbat shalom, everyone. You, um, well, I feel very arrested because I spent the, the whole one and a half days in bed due to a summer flu or COVID or whatever. But um, I thought it is less artist for me to get on the call um, instead of mobilizing someone to take that call short, yeah, to take to take on that assignment to facilitate the call with such short notice. So if you want to do me a favor and you love the Shabbat calls, then uh, give yourself give yourself a push and um, and uh, write me a message that you want to volunteer hosting one of the next Shabbat calls yourself. And in the meantime, bear with my creepy, funny voice. Um, at least it's not contagious over Zoom. So um, you, um, you will bear with me the few times I'm going to speak and then you will have uh, much understanding why there is lots of open mic sessions today for you to get active on the call because this is this is a Shabbat call. This is a family event. And this is about uh, you and me sharing about the Lord's goodness. So I greet you with Shabbat Shalom and the first song um, from our Messia Messianic brothers and sisters from Israel. Amen. Well, this music, this music, and even the even the pictures from from Islam really lift my spirit. And I, I'm, I'm sure to, to me, um, uh, above anything else, the Shabbat call is family time with the Global Watch family, and these are reminds us that as it's also family time with the, with the people of Israel as we enter this Shabbat. When I uh, communicated with Sue and Fred about who is going to facilitate this call as I, I didn't feel uh, well, they said they, they, can, they can do it and later said, oh no, I forgot we are away for a family, much needed family time. Uh, ourselves, I thought uh, this family video now with uh, uh, Shilu Ben Hod and his tribe in Israel. Let's take a moment, and I would like two or three of you to just uh, stretch out hands and reach out in prayer uh, with a blessing for Sue and Fred and their family time as they. Uh, are on a weekend away. Um, we've been so blessed throughout the year by by their commitment, and uh, let's let's bless them with uh, with Shabbat Shalom, with the Lord's deep rest and and quality time with their family uh, before they embark to to Hernhut and a, ne a next intense season. Mm -hmm. Wow. What so came cool. I'd like to bless uh, Fred and Sue. Uh, just and the thought that came to me was that scripture, come away over in song, song of songs, come away with me and just uh, rest. And um, I will give you rest. And God wanting to bring up, ca catching up his bride to come and be with him. So I pray, Lord, that as they're spending this time, we never get away from you. And that's the wonderful thing. We never get away from God. 
And I thank you that wherever they are at, that you would surround them with your presence, that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit with rest. Because you said that, Matthew, uh, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And we thank you so much, Lord, that we have that promise in you that it, uh, in the Psalms it says, I lifted the burden from the, uh, the shoulder from the burden. And you do, you lift the burden that we can cast all of our cares and concerns on you. So I pray that they would experience that and that you would fill them. This is a time of, of refilling as we pour out our alabaster jars, as we allow our jars to be broken so that it blesses others. You promise to refill those jars. So use this time to refill them with the anointing of your Holy Spirit, preparing them for the days ahead, for the leadership positions that you've called them to as they are pouring their lives into others to bring them into positions of leadership, of, of family, of coming together on the wall. Uh, we just thank you so much for that and that this would be just a genuine uh, time of strengthening them in the Lord in Jesus' name. Um, I want to read um, 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 Ephesians 2, um, verse 14 to 22. And I, uh, I prayed it for um, the body coming together as Jew and Gentiles in, in the Messiah, but also for, uh, especially for Sue and Fred, also for, for them coming in a new way together, their family coming in a new, deeper way in, in Christ and the Father together, and they reaching a deeper place in the Father through Christ. So I just read that. Um, for he is our peace, our shalom, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in, in ordinaries, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens, with the saints and of the household of God. And I build upon the foundation of the apostles and, and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fit, fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you, are, um, you also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Father, I pray that for the Jews, Gentiles coming together in you, Messiah, unto the Father. But I pray that for us all here, Father, on the Global Watch calls, Father, as a family, unto you, Father, um, in Christ, Lord, that every middle wall falls, everything falls. I thank you so much for this blessing, for this family you have built it up. I thank you so much for the faithfulness of Fred and Sue um, doing exactly how they saw you doing, what you said, told them to do, Father. I thank you that you bless them with an abundance of blessing and love overflowing them and refreshing them, Father. Now, just in this moment, blessing them mightily in their family, Father, with oneness, oneness, with joy, that this joy just overtakes them, Father with really um, overflowing life, Father. I thank you, Lord so, Lord, so much for this family time, for this place that we are coming together, that you pour out onto over and into us, your fullness, your abundance. We praise you and we thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Yes, go ahead. Hillary, go ahead. Oh, Ulrika, you rest your voice, okay. You just jump in when you need to. Hilary, go ahead. Thank you. I'd love to speak a blessing over them from uh, one Peter. 
And uh, Lord, I just want to praise and thank you for dear Fred and Sue. They've been such an inspiration. And as Paul wrote to the people, um, the elect pilgrims, he said um, in Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, where you dear ones are in Turkey, isn't it? That he was writing to. But this is what we speak for um, Fred and Sue and for each and every one of us that through the obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord, we speak grace and peace to be multiplied to Fred and Sue over this week and over the Shabbat. Your abundance of grace, Lord, your gift of righteousness, your abundance of shalom. And we come before you as the Prince of Peace. And we say, come and demolish all of the powers of chaos that would want to torment them, Lord. We say, put them in a bubble, put them a hedge around them, Father, of your angelic forces where the evil one will not be able to intrude. And they can have a beautiful time of communion with you and one another, Lord, a time of restoration. And we say, blessed be the God and Father and our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. That's what I pray for them, Lord. They would enter into a fresh revelation of you as our living, as their living hope, their lived experience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for them. And he kept, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So, Father, we pray for Fred and Sue, them to truly be able to have time out, time with you some playtime fun time together lord wonderful family time that will be enriching empowering and strengthening and not draining i pray that the family can be a blessing to them and them to their family members and the power of god would flow through them by faith and that they would have fresh revelation of the power of your salvation and the next steps you want to take them in this journey, Father, they'll be able to rest in you. You've got it all. You've gone ahead. And that, Lord, we greatly rejoice in this, that they will be able to be released from all the burdens and the things that have grieved them in many ways in this very stressful passage of time that we've been going through with America. And I know Lord dear Sue just really feels the pain of the burden of her, her nation. So Father, we ask you lift this from them over these days and they'd be able to enter as children of God into their Papa's arms and truly come into your rest. I pray for this in Jesus' precious name, amen. I would like to pray a blessing too. I think so much of this verse when I think of them. This is Isaiah 58, 13, which we all know here is it's Shabbat. If you hold back your foot on Shabbat from pursuing your own interests on a holy day, if you call Shabbat a delight, Jehovah's holy day worth honoring, then honor it by not doing your usual things or pursuing your interests or speaking about them. If you do, you will find delight in Jehovah. I will make you ride on the heights of the land and feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Yaakov for the mouth of Jehovah has spoken. Dear Father in heaven, we just thank you so much for how much Dr. Fred and Sue have poured their lives into us, Lord, and, and, and making us their family so much, Lord, that you would bless their family now. I think of the other verse about how a hundredfold you bless uh, people, Lord, when they leave their own families. They've given so much to us, Lord. Pour out, Lord, your presence, your heritage, your delight on them, oh, Father God, and in, into her hut too, Lord. Take all that into your hands that it'll just be so beautiful for them Lord, and give them a rest even in it, Lord, that all will go so smoothly for them, Lord. And most of all, I, I want to lift up them and their family, Lord, and you. 
in your presence, Lord, and your rest. And we thank you for them. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. And uh, you may not have noticed, or Rika posted in the chat, would somebody like to read Psalm 92? Yes, I would like to call forth Kitty. She offered to read Thank it. you. Thank you. I volunteered in my Bible. It's titled Praise to the Lord for His Love and Faithfulness, a song, a song for the Sabbath day. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of 10 strings, on the lute and on the harp with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your week. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh, Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass, and when all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are on high forevermore. For behold your enemies, O Lord. For behold, your enemies shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. My eye also has seen my desire on my enemies. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. Now, um, who is aware of the Jewish calendar? Uh, we are we are aware that that we are entering uh, a critical time, and the 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 concept, the the biblical or Hebrew concept, um, doesn't see time in a linear perspective, but but more like a spiral that we we come to we come to certain um certain points in history again but just on on a different level and as oh, we as we're entering uh the the time that is that is known in the uh, jewish history as the uh di dire straits so those three weeks leading up to the ninth of av that's a time where that has been very critical in in both the history of the Jewish people, but also I believe in world history. And um, according to Jewish tradition, today on uh, Friday the sixteenth of Tammuz, it is the day that that in the desert uh, when. Moses was on Mount Sinai, Sinai uh, encountering the Lord that in his absence, the golden calf was, uh, was built and who was uh, killed. Then tomorrow on the Shabbat is when Moses descended and broke the tables of the, the first set of uh, tables of the 10 commandments where later on, during the temple period, um, the daily sacrifices were suspended and where also the, the walls of Jerusalem were preached. Because tomorrow is a Shabbat, then the fasting day at the beginning of the three-week period 
of mourning is postponed to Sunday, but um, but it's it's entering into a really difficult time. And as we've been praying um, uh, um, with uh, Rick Riding's initiative on the turning and um, praying praying that God would would stop the the Gentile nations uh, to get in unity in that Babel spirit to to come against Israel. Uh, we um, we've we've been we've been pressing in um, with the Lord at different levels um, here on the Global Watch and many of you uh, even for personal issues I. Uh, I sense it's it's a time of of shaking and pressing in and holding on to where it sometimes gets hard. Um, but um, I can talk from rich experience as a mom of seven, and uh, we're we are uh, in with baby number eight in in about three weeks. So when I when I talk to you about about a woman's uh, child labor, I can I can draw from experience and and I um, and I know in that in that time or in that intense time of pain and and labor and and it's it's hard physical work. How important it are are those times to uh, to relax within the pressing and take a deep breath and yeah, relax the body to be then free for uh, and strengthened for the next next push. And I believe that this is what this Shabbat is about. It is um, for you to come or to remind yourselves to come under his canopy of grace in that place of deep rest, uh, not just physically and emotionally, but even spiritually to come uh, to, to be reminded of that place in the, in the shadow of his cross and the finished works of his cross that we can, we can not just relax with Jesus, but really come to this deep place of rest in him um, from which we, we bear strength for for the next intense phase, and I, I believe as as we're moving forth in the end times, it, it's not going to get better at and easier altogether, or that like there will be that silver, uh, that yeah that that there will be these these thumbs up signs on the horizon, but rather. It is. It is a time that we're looking out and crying out for, for Yeshua to come. This Maranatha call, and in the meantime, do not, uh, do not, do not get weary, but always um, get back to the place of hiding yourself in Yeshua, and in in the finished work of the cross, and. And one way to, to yeah, uh, one way to to express this this resting in Him is to remind us of God's goodness. And therefore, after the next song, I I would like to open the mic for for your testimony of where you where you have experienced God uh, God. Uh, kneeling down or declining to your uh not declining but to bowing down uh to 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 your um uh, as you called and cried out to the lord how he answered your your prayer how he met your need and that can be referring to an issue that we've been praying here on the global watch or your national watches where you have received um uh Zap, yeah, answer answer to prayer, or even a testimony, a fresh testimony from your personal lives. But um, let us let us share this uh, to give 
glory and honor to the Lord, but even to, to uplift our spirits in, and encourage us in him. So Vic, you uh, play the next song. And for those of you who came equally unprepared, get your, use that time to get your communion elements. And then um, um, after the song, there is uh, time for the first bold one to, to share his or her testimony with us. I'd love to give a testimony. Um, what seemed to be absolutely impossible to um, fly out of South Africa suddenly became possible on the 23rd of June. And so, and it was, uh, it was about two days after I was looking at everybody who was going to Hernhut and I just like, oh, I'd love to see everybody. I'd love to meet everybody after three years of seeing people on Zoom. And then, as I say, two days later, they, they opened our borders and no restrictions. And, um, and suddenly it was like a sign from the Lord that I could try and go. And every step that I've taken so far has been one of just trusting and faith. Um, I got everything done for, obviously for the conference because that deadline was the 30th of June. But um, then after that, uh, only the, the last thing I managed to do last Wednesday or this, this few days ago was the booking from pra uh, from London to Prague. So, well, so far, so good. So <laughs> we'll see how it's going. Uh, but it's certainly a pushing through of faith and to the Lord just taking me on this journey of step by step. Um, I, in the past, I've always like uh, worked everything out uh, in one go. But now I realize I've got to trust the Lord at each step. And as I take the one step, so he opens the doors for the next one. So that's my testimony at the moment. Thank you. I have to add to that. Um, years and years ago, I had an investment and um, made an investment and um, it went sour. And it was like costing me on a regular basis. And uh, I mean, eventually it could have completely drained my account. Um, and I could not get rid of it. I couldn't, uh, it was a property and I couldn't, nobody wanted it because anyway. So it, I was in a desperate place and I learned day by day to wake up in the morning and say, okay, God, what do I do now? What do I do now? And um, every day I, I'd get an idea what to do. And there were multiple issues, right? And every day he'd say, he'd direct me as to what to do. And even though some things didn't even make sense to me or like, Somebody would say, hey, why, why don't you do this? And I would do it. And anyway, eventually, it, pretty much God's intervention, um, uh, I was able to kind of close all the issues and move on. And then um, during, um, so for the worship set, for the 12 hour worship set, you know, Armenia watch fell on um, during that 12 hour. And, and um, I, I um, so the altar really couldn't, uh, couldn't do the worship. And so um, every day I say, okay, so I learned the pattern, right? I learned how to walk with God. And I, oh my God, so much I learned of his faithfulness. He gave me dream. He gave me prophetic words during, it took like two years, that season of my life. And then so much abundance actually came from it. He not only made up for what I lost and what was stolen actually from me, but I think within a year, I over, I may, I, um, uh, I recovered and even more. So, um, so like even, so I was remembering that as I'm every morning, I go, okay, God, uh, who, who should I contact? Who could do the worship this Tuesday, you know? And, um, eventually, um, uh, Shushan came around and she was able to work something out, but so, um, so anyway, but just learning so much of his faithfulness during that season and step-by-step, step, like Joe was saying, okay, Lord, what do I do now? What, um, and he, um, yeah, he resolved things little by little until it was a close issue altogether. I have a, I have a praise of God. Um, in 2018, I was in Israel for a three month trip and I thought I would be staying at one particular ministry, but I became more and more miserable. How can you be miserable in Israel? But I did. And so I asked for time off to go to Jerusalem. 
I went to Jerusalem and and um, <clears throat> and I stayed one night with a woman, a, a friend of a friend. She was mm, she was uh, <laughs> crazy. Okay, I've said it. And so I determined that I was going to stay there, but I had nowhere to go. It was high holidays in, in March. And I took my little suitcase, my little overnight suitcase. It started raining of all wonderful things in Jerusalem, really a downpour. So I, have, I bought an umbrella and I got a map. So I'm trying to drag my suitcase with these two things in my hand and my purse apparently. And, and, um, and I'm trying to read the like Hebrew streets. Where am I? I've, I've heard there's a there's a um, hostel here, a YMCA. So I'm looking for that, which wasn't there anymore. But anyway, I'm dragging my suitcase, and I look up and I see a like a blue metal uh, uh, facade on a, on a building, and it's very uncommon to see that. And I suddenly I said, oh, "That's the Bible Society in Israel. I know that. I I know." Um, I know the director of that. And, and so I stepped across the threshold and I knew that I knew that I knew that I was exactly where I was supposed to be, even though I had no idea where I was going or where I was, would stay or what was going on. And I, I went over to, to leave a message for um, Victor because he wasn't there at the time and Victor Kalisher. And, and so when I finished the message, I handed it to the clerk and I, and I said, this is for Victor. And he said, why don't you give it to him? He's right behind you. And so Victor called a friend and put me up in a, for a couple of nights in a, an apartment on King David Street, which is right across, where I could go out on the back lanai of this place and look at Joppa Gate where the tour buses come in. And holy Jesus, I ended up with an invitation to come to Sukkot Halal. So I went back to the previous ministry and was released there with blessing to go to Sukkot Halal for the remainder of that time. And, and uh, the rest of that is, is another glorious story. Praise God. Just wanted to add a very short, uh, because following what Kitty said, that I'm scheduled to go to Sukkot Halal in October and now but for the first time um, and a lot of expectations. So um, just, it is encouraging me because I was asking the Lord God, how is gonna be, I'm gonna go in alone. I'm gonna be in Sukkot Halal. I've never been to Israel alone. So all these things and this testimony is so much encouraging that the Lord will do something amazing in the days to come. I'd like to share two praise reports too. In 2000, 20 in January, my husband and I were at the Maranatha conference and many of the people in Global Watch were there too, but I didn't meet them. And through COVID, the Lord opened the door to actually build relationships with many of you through the difficulty of not being able to go anywhere or travel anywhere. And I just think that it's this example of how God uses difficult things to often bring us together. And so that's a praise report. And I'm looking forward to seeing many of you at Hearn Hut in a few weeks. And secondly, about six years ago, I was diagnosed with advanced cancer. And just three months before that, I had met a very dear Messianic Jewish family in the Chicago area. And I won't go into the details, but um, obviously at that time, I didn't know that I had cancer. And when I was diagnosed, the Lord opened the door for me to go and have treatment in the Chicago area. And through that time, I was invited often into the home of this dear family and invited me to their Shabbat table. And they really um, prayed for me and walked with me in that season. And I'll just give witness now, this family is in Panama where I live now. And they're ministering to the body of believers in this country this summer. God developed a very strong relationship between us and they are working and strengthening the body of Christ here to minister to um, those with disabilities and special needs. Some dear friends of ours have a special needs orphanage here in Panama, but they're also creating an open door and a, 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 a place, a, an open door for ministry to the Jewish people in this country. 
And many of us have been laboring and praying for the many Jewish people in this, in this land who don't know their Messiah. And I believe the coming together of one new man, Jew and Gentile, in this, these days, and particularly on um, the 12th, when we stood in one of a meeting place together and made the declarations and lifted up high praise, I just felt something was ignited or unleashed and that God is going to, in the labor pains, is going to bring forth a, a harvest in this, from this country. So I want to give him praise. And as we wait on him, as more birth pains are coming, that surely he will give birth to his child. Molly, go ahead. Molly. Uh, thank you, Ulrich. Um, so um, I also want to give uh, the Lord um, a praise report because when uh, initially when uh, um, when Sue mentioned about Hernhut, I, I, this is the first time I was hearing uh, and being on Global Watch very recently. Um, I, I I had never been to Hernhut uh, and when this invitation was put in for the summit, I didn't feel any stirring to be part or to a, a leading to be, to go from the Lord. Um, but it was um, uh, after uh, the, um, the Passover, the recent Passover, um, And also with, uh, with um, um, let me get this right. Um, too many, uh, a timeline that God's been putting together was just beginning to stir up in my spirit. Starting from Chuck Pierce talking about Passover and the, the Lamb of God and um, you know, how the, the blood of the Lamb of God and how we will be positioning as a body of Christ, um, uh, understanding Passover and how we will cross over. So that was uh, when, when the Passover feast was on uh, in the beginning. And then we had Lou Engel and all, uh, and uh, Dean Briggs and many others coming in the revelation of uh, having the communion revival from Jerusalem. And then came the, then I had a prophetic dream uh, in which I saw the globe spinning and, and um, I saw the words, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And then came uh, the announcement of Hernhut and and even then there was nothing stirring. And then when the national prayer team that we pray with, they put out a book called The Moravian Miracle. And I was asked to do a book review. And when I read the book review, it really hit me hard that there's a reason why God wants, I really felt the call and the surreal deep stirring and a conviction that I must count go to Hernhut because the book is all about the about the lamb uh, about Count Zinzendorf and Jesus Haas and and the Moravian Pentecost that happened and all about beholding the Lamb of God. So I can't tell you the 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 awe and the fear of the Lord and the excitement um, that I feel in my spirit. And my husband and I both wanted to come, but some things have happened and uh, he's not able to come, but he's sending me. And I just feel, I, I, just, I just can't put uh, a term for the emotions I feel, but I just feel something is so exciting and so uh, awesome for this time that we are meeting. Um, I just want to, just the way God is putting out everything for me, it's just like he's going ahead, like Joe said, putting everything in order this far. And I'm truly excited about what God is going to do. I really believe that this 
uh, anniversary of the 300th anniversary um, that happened, um, you know, to, to end the persecution because of the persecution of the body and the blood uh, uh, that these uh, Moravians could not have and the Catholic Church persecuting them. And that's why they came all the way to Hernhut. Um, is all emphasizing about the communion and the body and the blood of Jesus. I just feel it's uh, such an awe of the revelation of, uh, of the body and the blood of Jesus is going to be just amazing as we come. Yeah, that's all I wanted to share. Hey, amen, Molly. And it was like I ordered your your testimony in advance because this is what we're what we're going to do now, beholding the Lamb as Vic will lead us in communion. Wow! <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thanks for a great intro, Molly. <laughs> so, if you have your elements ready, yes. Thanks. So bearing in mind what Molly just said, although we've all taken communion many, many times during our lives, let's look to this to be a fresh revelation of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. So we know that on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. So we do the same, Lord. We take this piece of bread, and we give you thanks for the bread of life, for the Lord Jesus Christ, for the breath that you've given us, for the blood that flows through our veins, and for the Holy Spirit that has given us life and life everlasting. So as Jesus did, we break this bread, and we remember you, and we give you thanks. Amen. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said that this was his blood. It was the cup of the new covenant, the covenant made between God and us, arbitrated by the Lord himself. I love that he favored the title Son of Man, not Son of God. As Son of Man, he was able to stand for us, to live and to die for us. So as we take this cup, we remember his life, his death, his resurrection. And in his resurrection is the hope of ours and the hope of the world. The cup of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the sins forgiven. Amen. Back to you, Ulrika. Thank you, Vic, and thank you everyone who not only listened, but, but actively participated in this call. And I leave you with a blessing from Israel with the last song into a hopefully restful, peaceful sh uh, Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. God bless everyone. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you.